morning. Psalm chapter 113, uh, we're going to begin reading in, in verse number 7. Read through verse eight, and then we also going to we're going to go through the whole chapter here. It's only only nine verses, but I want to take my text from verse number seven, verse number eight. The Bible says, "He raiseth up the poor out of the dust, and lifteth the needy out of the dunghill, that he may set him with princes, even the princes." of his people. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, I pray you'd help me for a few minutes. I pray you'd use me for your honor and your glory. And please preach through me. We'll give you the praise, honor, and glory for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Psalm 113 here is a hallelujah psalm. It was saying uh, uh, at the feast days uh, when in the Old Testament when they would sing uh, songs like we're singing today, they would sing songs like this in Psalm 113 uh, where it says, Praise ye the Lord. Amen. And uh, I don't know about you, but I'll be 40 years old here in two days uh, and I've got a lot to praise the Lord for this morning. Amen. And uh, the, uh, God has been truly good to me. Uh, and as Brother Foster said, I don't have anything to apologize about. Uh, I was raised in an independent, fundamental, Bible-believing Baptist church. Uh, I'm not trying to get over anything. Uh, I'm glad that God allowed me uh, the privilege to be raised in a, in, in a pastor's home, in a preacher's home. Uh, amen. Where they preached this King James Bible uh, where they told me that I was going to hell for my sins uh, if I didn't get saved. Uh, I got a lot to praise him for this morning. Uh, and I'll say this, has nothing to do with the message, uh, but it crossed my mind. Uh, hey man, I'm sick and tired of these people uh, that are saying I'm trying to get over fundamentalism. Uh, I'm trying to get over, uh, hey man, the way I was raised. Uh, hey, I'm glad for the way I was raised. Uh, I'm glad that God in his sovereignty uh, and in his mercy uh, seen fit uh, to let me be raised. Hey man, in the home I was raised in, in the part of the country I was raised in. I could have been raised in Ukraine. I could have been raised in Saudi Arabia. But thanks be to God for the grace of God had allowed me to be brought up. Amen. Where I was brought up has nothing to do with the message this morning, but I thought I'd say that. Amen. But we have a lot to praise Him for this morning. Amen. Here in this text, we'll go through through the whole chapter here, but in verse number one, we see first of all there's a call to praise. Hey man, this morning I want to preach on we have something to praise him for. Hey man, we have something to praise him for. This brother right here was a praising him a minute ago. His choir was a praising him. Hey man, people shouting, you got something to praise him for this morning. Hey, let me say this. Hey man, God's more interested in your worship than he is in your works. He said to come long before he ever said to go. Hey man, I've got two boys. I've got a 13 year old and I've got a 9 year old. Hey, and I like to see them. I tell them to go do stuff. Uh, and I like to see them go mow. And I like to see them go, uh, hey man, we got a dog, so before we mow, uh, I, they have to go shovel the yard. And I'll leave it at that. That's their favorite job to do. Uh, hey man, I tell them, I say, it's time, boys, to clean up the yard. Uh, I like to see them working, working and doing what I tell, but I tell them to do. But I tell you what I like to see them do more than that. Uh, I like to see them come up to me, uh, wrap their arms around me, uh, tell me how much they love me, uh, how much they're thankful for me. Uh, hey man, uh, sit down beside me say dad I just want to tell you I love you hey that does more for me uh, than seeing them work for me seeing them do what I ask them to do uh, how much more do you think it is that the Lord uh, would rather us praise him uh, rather us worship him uh, amen he's more interested this morning uh, in our worship than he is our works uh, Hey man, that's not to say give you any kind of lax on your works. Hey man, he's interested in them too. But a lot of times, hey man, saved people, preachers, uh, we put so much uh, time and so much effort in going and doing and working uh, that we forget about worshiping him. Uh, we forget about what's important. Uh, we forget about lifting him up. Uh, and he draw all men unto himself. Hey man. But first of all, this morning we see there's a call to praise. Hey man, verse number one, the Bible said, Praise ye the Lord. Hey man, praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 2 said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, over and over again in the Word of God, we have, we are called to praise the Lord. Uh, amen. To call to make much of Jesus. Uh, and you know, I, I, we got people where I live. Uh, hey man, uh, they'll say, Preacher, it's just not in me. And I know people are got different personalities and, and some people cry, some people shout, some people run, some people do whatever. Uh, but hey man, I tell you, these people, they just sit there back there in church. Uh, they get you supposed to be uh, kind 
got a sold up all the time uh, and you'll see them at a ball game uh, hey man and their boy ain't scored two points all year uh, and they up and a screaming and a hollering uh, and a carrying on like a nut uh, but yet they won't say nothing about the Lord uh, the one who saved them uh, the one who washed them in his blood uh, the one who's forgiven them of all their sins uh, the one who's given them a life worth living uh, hey we're called to worship him this morning called to praise him uh, I don't ever want to get over worshiping the Lord I don't ever want to get over praising him hey we know everything that Job went through Job lost his family he lost his ten children lost all of his wealth all of his health but if you read verse 20 of Job chapter 1 the Bible said then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and he fell down upon the ground and he worshipped he still had something to praise him for hey God's been good to us this morning if he took it all away we still have to say thank you Lord praise you Lord worship him this morning Amen. Hey man, we see the call to praise. Then we see the congregation of praise. Verse 1, he said, Oh, ye servant of the Lord. If anybody's going to worship him, if anybody ought to praise him, it ought to be us that are saved. It ought to be us that are blood bought. It ought to be us, hey man, that Jesus has done the most for. He said those that the, the one that he's forgiven the most, he'll love the most. Hey, I don't know about you, but he sure has been good to me. Hey, if you're saved this morning, your blood washed. Hey, most of you this morning, before you got saved, hey, it'd do you good to think back before you got saved and look at where you're at now. Everything that he's given you, all of your, all of your is provided for you, hey man, your house you live in, the car you drive hey man, the clothes on your back hey, we got a lot to praise the Lord for he saved you, he's washed you in his blood, he set you among his princes, he set you among God's people, God's people are the greatest people in the world, hey man we got a lot to praise him for this morning, we see the continuance of his praise, verse 2 and 3 he said, Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. He said, From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Hey, you ought to praise Him all the time. You ought to praise Him on the job. You ought to praise Him, amen, at school, young people. Uh, you ought to praise Him, amen, in the house of God. Some people think the only time you can praise the Lord uh, is on Sunday between 10 and 12. Uh, hey, I got news for you. Some of the me some of the best times that I've had with the Lord uh, has been by myself, uh, riding down the road, uh, hey, amen, praying uh, and praising the Lord. Uh, hey, amen, the Bible talks about over in 2 Corinthians, 2 Chronicles, uh, that the cloud filled the temple uh, when they got to thanking Him uh, and they got to praising Him. Uh, said that the priest could not even preach. Hey, I like it when it gets that way. Hey, it gets that way every now and then at the house. It gets that way in the car. Hey, man, when this COVID thing first started, I work a job as well. Hey, man, I kind of like that preacher uh, said he's tri-vocational. Hey, man, I do a little bit of everything, make a little money. Hey, man. Uh, but with that being said, uh, uh, I work a job. And uh, when this COVID thing happened, they shut down all the lobbies. You couldn't go eat nowhere. And uh, I was home by myself one day working. And I thought, you know, I'm, I, we got this little Japanese place down the road called Akita. I said, I love it. I, I mean, I eat the styrofoam. I eat everything. I mean, I love it, what comes in. And I drove, I drove through the drive-thru. They wouldn't in the lobby, wouldn't open. Went through the drive-thru, got me my order, sat out in, the, yard, sat out in the, the parking lot to eat it. And I was sitting there eating, and I was listening to Brother Stenet Blue. Hey, man, Brother Stenet Blue's in heaven. Hey, man, most of you probably know who he is. But he just got talking about how good God was. I talked about how good God had been. How we ought to praise Him. How we ought to worship Him. Hey, I went from eating that chicken and that rice. Hey, man, I was a praising the Lord. I was a thanking Him. People sitting there looking at me like, what in the world has this old boy got into over here? Hey, you say, what do you mean? Hey, you ought to praise Him all the time. Hey, tell them, young people. Tell them at school. Hey, you don't have to be loud. You don't have to be proud. You say, hey, look what Jesus has done for me. Hey, that's as much a praise as worshiping him here at the house of God. Hey man, see the continuance, we see the cause of praise. Verse 4 through 8. And the Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. The cause of his worship is cause of his glorious character. Brother Doug made mention of his long suffering. 
of His mercifulness, of His grace. Hey man, of his love. Hey, I'm talking about he ain't the big man upstairs. Hey man, I'm telling you, you'll, you'll, you'll make a man mad and make me want to fight you. Start talking about being the big man upstairs. The Bible said that the heavens can't even contain his glory. And he has to humble himself down. Hey man, to even come down here to the heavens and come down here to the earth. That's the kind of God we serve. Hey man, he's a long suffering and a merciful God. His glorious character. See, he's a gracious, condescending of God. He bending low and stooping down. Yeah. Hey man, verse 5 through 6, oh that he would stoop so far down yeah. to be interested in us. Yeah. Hey man, Brother Rocky, when you, when, however long ago when you got saved, Hey man, you're sitting in that jail cell. Hey man, the God who was who was the glory couldn't even contain in the in heaven. Hey man, come down there where you was at in that jail. He stooped down just like he did me on January the eighth, nineteen ninety eight, as a fifteen year old boy at Shady Grove Baptist Church, lost and on my way to hell. He came looking for me. Hey man, he stooped so far down. See the great concern of God that he would come. Interesting in us. That's the introduction. I got 15 more minutes. Amen. Hey, man, I'm going to give you four reasons you ought to be thankful this morning. Is this my water? Is it, did you drink? Okay. Amen. I appreciate that. Thank you. Amen. Fourth, four reasons we ought to, we have a reason to, play, to praise Him here in these verses. Hey, man, verse 7, we see, first of all, the places that He looks. Verse 7. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust, yeah. Yeah. lifteth the needy out of the dung hill. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad he just didn't come looking in places of, pro of, of, of prominence. Places, amen, of prestige. Places that I would go looking for somebody. Hey, man, places that I'd be interested in, Brother Doug. He came looking in the very least last place that you could ever expect come looking for us. Hey, man, uh, I'm glad, like I said, he come to Shady Grove Baptist Church looking for a lost teenager that thought I saved. Hey man, I'd made a profession of faith as a nine-year-old boy. Thought I saved. God been dealing with me for quite some time. Uh, that morning, I went to Christian school. That morning, uh, I remember praying, saying, Lord, uh, if you'll let me get back to church tonight, I could have got saved there at the desk. Uh, hey man, I said, if you let me get back there, hey amen, to church tonight, uh, I'm going to get saved. Uh, hey man, I didn't have to wait on three verses of just as I am. Uh, hey man, uh, they didn't even preach. They hadn't even preached yet. Uh, they got to sin. Uh, I was waiting. Hey man, I was sitting back there. Uh, God was uh, dealing with my heart. Lord, uh, hey man, the places he came a looking. Uh, he didn't have to come to Sevierville, uh, 7.7 .7 billion people in the world, uh, but he is interested in me. Uh, hey, whenever you got saved, hey man, that night uh, or that morning, uh, he is interested in you. Uh, it was a personal touch, a personal salvation. He came a looking. Hey man, I'm reminded over in Luke 15, the lady there is a parable of a lady find, uh, losing a coin. The Bible says in verse 8, it said, What woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one, does not light a candle, sweep the house and seek diligent till she finds it? Hey man, you know, this is a picture of the Holy Ghost. Hey man, this is a picture of Him coming looking for you. The Bible says no man can come to the Father, come to me except the Father which has sent me, draw him. Hey man, I remember when the Holy Ghost of God shined the light illuminating my mind hey amen awaken me to my lost condition awaken me to what Jesus Christ had did show me I was a sinner uh, show me he was a savior uh, show me how much he loved me uh, that's a perfect picture uh, he come uh, was a sweeping with the word of God uh, sweeping my heart uh, showing me what I was uh, and the glorious gospel uh, shined the light down in my heart uh, and the Holy Ghost said he's speaking about you boy uh, you're the one I'm looking for uh, and I got saved that night the places he looks. Sunday morning, you know, you go through different spells at your church. People get saved. People don't get saved. We went through a little dry spell here lately, people getting saved. And as a pastor, you think, man, what's going on? You know, you get worried about that. If you don't get worried about it, you ought to get worried about it. Hey, man, that's just the way it is. And, but with that being said, we'd had Bible school last week and... and uh, and had a little girl get saved. She went, was going home there Friday night, and uh, nobody got saved. Bible school. Let me say this. 
You might disagree with me. I'm not for easy believism. Hey, man, I'm not for going in a classroom full of 12 kids saying, who in here wants to go to heaven tonight when you die? Hey, man, raise your hand. Who in here don't want to go to hell? Raise your hand. Hey, any 12-year-old kid got any kind of sense, uh, don't want to go to hell, wants to go to heaven. Uh, hey, it takes a work of the Holy Ghost of God in their heart. Hey, man, uh, this little girl, about 11 year old, she's been coming. She's a foster girl. These people been bringing her. Sweetest little girl you ever seen. Hey, man, she was on her way home that night, Friday night. Hey, man, since she busted out crying, her sister was taking her home. Trinity said, what's wrong with you, Erica? You sick? You hurt? She said, no, I need to get saved. Hey, man, uh, hey, turned the car around. She come back to the house of God and got saved by the grace of God. Well, then Sunday morning, uh, you know how it is, preachers. Uh, you, sometimes you're kind of torn between two messages, what to preach. Uh, but there's other times when you know uh, that you know that this is the message. Uh, and I thought, man, Lord, you want me to preach on hell? Uh, and let me say this, uh, hell ought to be preached on a whole lot more than it is. Uh, but, hey, man, I preached on hell that day. Uh, hey, man, Sunday morning. We had two 10-year-old kids get saved, a 75-year-old woman and a 29-year-old heroin addict. Got saved. You say, what are you trying to say? Hey, I ain't bragging. Ain't nothing. It's all about the Lord. But I'm talking about the places that it comes to looking. 10-year-old kids, 75-year-old women, and 29-year-old heroin addicts. He came a-looking for them. Amen. You got something to praise Him for this morning. Amen. Something to praise Him. I think about the people that He locates. Verse 7. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust. Hey Amen. And lifteth the needy out of the dunghill. Hey Amen. He locates the poor and he locates the needy. Hey Amen. I think in John chapter 4, we see that race doesn't matter to him. The woman at the well, she is a Samaritan. I mean, she is a half breed. I mean, she is half Jew. I mean, she was half Gentile. And the Bible talks about she come near in the noon of the day when none of the other women was there, Brother Doug. You say, why? Because she'd been married five times uh, and the man that she was with wasn't her husband. She is ashamed. Some repentance has gone on in her heart. She is ashamed of her sin. Uh, amen. That day, no doubt, uh, she came a walking, amen, uh, coming to the well, uh, thinking it's just like any other day, Brother Doug. Uh, but that day, amen, she didn't know uh, that Jesus was a sitting on the well. Uh, he is awaiting on her that day. Uh, and when the story's over, she dropped the water pot uh, and she went into town uh, and she told the men of the city, hey, come look and see uh, a man that told me all things whatsoever I did. Yeah. Hey, amen, I'm glad when you get saved there's a change. Yes, say, so why'd she go tell the men of the city? She knew them better than anybody else. Yeah. Hey, man, uh, no doubt she went to the ones, no doubt that she had committed sin with. Uh, said, hey, fellas, uh, come look at me. You know what I used to be? Uh, she used to be ashamed of it. Uh, she was coming during the noon of the day, but now now she ain't ashamed no more. That's the way it is when people get saved. Amen. Hey, they're ashamed of being a drunkard. They're ashamed of being a harlot. But when they come and God saves them, they got a testimony. Hey, I used to be this, but look what God did for me. Hey, you got something to praise Him for. Hey, man, I think about over Mark 5. Hey, man, race don't matter. Rottenness don't matter. Hey, man, old maniac of Gadara. Brother Willer Thomas said he was a new dude. In a rude mood. Yeah. Hey man, so boy was a running naked, cutting himself in the in the tombs. But Jesus thought so much of him that he sailed a stormy sea going to look for this old new dude in a rude mood and nobody else wanted anything to do with and when he got done with him he was sitting clothed and in his right mind. He is a Baptist long before he ever got saved. So what do you mean? He's naked. Hey man, I know that guy hit a knot hit a nail there. He is naked. Hey man, let me say this. In the summertime, if you're saved, man ought not have to put mule blinders on to go to Walmart so that he don't see something that he ought not look at. Hey man, it does matter what you look like on the outside. You say, preacher, God sees my heart. I know, but nobody else does. Uh, and your testimony ain't for the Lord. Uh, it's for everybody else. Hey man. I thought I'd hit on that there this second. That got nothing to do with the message. Hey man. Rottenness don't matter. Riches don't matter. Luke 19, he came looking for Zacchaeus. Yeah. Hey man, he's waiting under the tree for this little man. Yeah. You know, Zacchaeus, it looks like, was looking for him. Yeah. But he was looking for Zacchaeus. Right. We think when we got saved, we was looking for him, Brother Rocky, but realistically, the reason we was looking for him is because he's looking for us. 
Zacchaeus was a little man. He climbed up in the tree. He had heard about this man, Jesus. He climbed up in this tree, was a looking around. The whole time, Jesus was standing right underneath him. He said, hey, Zacchaeus, come on down today. Hey, that's the same way it was when we got saved. I thought I was looking for him, but the reason I was looking for him, he is looking for me. And Zacchaeus, he was an IRS man. We all love, amen, we all love April. We all love tax time, amen. Uh, we all love giving to the IRS, amen. Everybody shout right there, uh, amen. He is a tax man and he was a crooked one to boot. But God saved him and there was such a change that took place in his life. He said, if I've wronged anybody, I'll pay them back four times, Brother Doug. I'll give them back four times. You say, what are you trying to say, preacher? Uh, if he saves you, he's going to change you. And you ought to thank God. you got a reason to praise him because when he did save you, he did change you and change your life. Hey man, riches don't matter, rottenness don't matter, race don't matter, religion don't matter. Nicodemus in John 3, the Bible said he came to him by night. The reason he came to him by night, he, he was a ruler of the Jews, he's a Pharisee. He didn't want everybody else to see him talking to this man Jesus. Hey man, but when he talked to Jesus, he got saved. Yeah. And then you see over, and I think it's in John chapter 19, when Jesus dies on the cross. Of, hey man, Joseph and guess who else? Nicodemus came and got his body and took him out off the cross. Uh, he went from being ashamed of him, uh, ashamed coming in the middle of the night, to not ashamed of him, saying, hey, I'm one of his. Uh, I'm a follower of his. Uh, hey, you say, what do you mean, preacher? Uh, hey, that's what the Lord will do for you. He'll change your life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank God for the places he looks, yeah. people he locates. Then we see in verse 7 the powerful way that he lives. Yeah. He said, He raiseth up the poor yeah. out of the dust. I'm glad when God saves you, He don't just leave you. Yes, Amen. I where you is at? Right. You know how we know the par you know how we know that the prodigal got saved? Because he got out of the hog pen. Right. He didn't stay in the hog pen. Right. That's how we know he got out of the hog pen. Hey man, you know how we know you got saved? Because you got out of the hog pen of sin that you was living in. That don't mean you'll be perfect. That don't mean you'll be sinless. Uh, that means you will you, that your salvation is not about perfection. Uh, it's about a new direction. Uh, the Bible said he came to himself uh, and he turned uh, and he went back to the Father's house. On uh, hey, January the 8th, 1998, uh, I came to myself. Uh, I repented and got saved uh, and I turned from my sin uh, and I've been repenting ever since. Uh, Brother Billy Mitchell said, uh, the reason I know I repented today, I got saved it's cause I'm still repenting today are you still repenting today hey man you still repenting hey man the Bible said he raiseth up the poor out of the dust lifteth the needy out of the dung hill that's another way of saying 2 Corinthians 5 17 therefore hey man it's there it's there for a reason therefore if any man be in Christ he is a new creature he didn't say that he might be that he's going to be he is. That's present tense. Yeah. Amen. It might not be evident right immediately like that second, but it won't take long before you get to realize it. Right. He is a new creature. Yeah. Whole things passed away. I think a perfect picture of this, I'm almost finished, is, is a story over in 2 Samuel chapter 9. You've heard the story of Mephibosheth. Yeah. You know the story in the Old Testament if a king took over. He usually killed all the lineage of the previous king to keep them from being able to take his throne. Hey man, and David here, who's the type of God the Father, asked Ziba, his servant, who's the type of God the Holy Ghost. He said, Is there one that I can show of the house of Saul that I can show kindness to for Jonathan's sake? Jonathan's the type of Jesus Christ. Hey man, he said, There is one. His name's Mephibosheth. He's down in Lodibar. Mephibosheth is a type of the sinner. Lodibar is a type of the world. Yeah. Amen. And I can almost see him. No doubt Lodibar was a poor, if you look up the history, he was a poor, run down, uh, just, a very, uh, just a very rough area that he was hiding in. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt he'd look out and think, I wonder if today will be the day. And you know Mephibosheth was crippled from a fall from when he was a little boy. Amen. Because Saul's nurse was running with him and fell. Amen. And, 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 and crippled him. And uh, so he didn't have, I thought about this, now don't start reading the Bible, this is my imagination. This is, as, as Brother Sidney says, this is uh, Weaver commentary. Amen. I got this out of his commentary I bought. Amen. Uh, so you say, what do you mean? Well, he, he, you think about it, he didn't have no wheelchair, probably back in. He didn't have none of them little scooters you could ride around in, like today. No doubt he drug himself 
Amen. Through the dirt floors of that house. No doubt it was filthy and dirty, just like this old boy in Psalm 13, uh, where he said, Amen, that the dirt and the dunghill. No doubt, Amen, Mephibosheth was, was filthy from sin, if you will. And that day, here come the king's chariots. You could hear them coming down the street. Hey man, no doubt old Mephibosheth heard them. He thought, oh no, oh no, it's today. He's found out I'm down here and he's coming to kill me. Oh, Ziba's the top of the Holy Ghost. No doubt jumped out of that royal chariot. Hey man, with his royal robe on and he was walking to the door. He no doubt said, hey Mephibosheth, hey, it's going to be okay. Hey, I'm coming down here to get you. And as he walked in the house, Mephibosheth dirty in the sin. He didn't say, hey, go take a bath. Uh, hey, go clean up. Uh, go put you some new clothes on. Uh, he picked him up just like he was uh, in the filth of his sin, uh, in the dunghill of his sin. Uh, and he said, hey, uh, it's the best day of your life, boy. You're going to the king's house. Hey, man, he put him in the chariot. No doubt Mephibosheth's still worried. But he takes him home to the king's house. No doubt David says, hey, boy, Welcome home. Yeah. Huh? Welcome home. Yeah. Puts him, no doubt he goes and cleans him up. Yeah. And then guess what he did? He took him dirty clothes of his righteousness off yeah. and he put on the king's clothes on him. Yeah. And he said, guess what? You're my boy now. Yeah. Hey, you live here till you die. What land belonged to your dad is now yours. Hey, this is your servant. These are your people. Uh, hey, what's mine is yours. What's yours is mine. Uh, welcome to the king's house, boy. That's the same way God did me that day. Uh, hey, man, as a 15-year-old boy, uh, I knelt down in repentance. Uh, I took on my old righteousness. Uh, I put on the Lord Jesus Christ's righteousness. And as far as God's concerned, uh, hey, man, I'm perfect in His sight because when He sees me, He sees He's the blood of His Son, His righteousness. Last of all, and I'm finished. Verse 8. I've had a good time. I don't know if you have. Verse 8 said that He may set Him with princes, even with the princes of His people. He took on Mephibosheth. You could tell he was lame from his legs, but he scooted him up to that table. Amen. And everybody looking at him, he looked just like one of them. Hey, you know, that's the way the Lord did me when I got saved. You know, I, as I said earlier, God's people are the best people in the world. Hey, I, I grew up and I had the privilege of growing up in a, in a good home. And I'll be honest with you, I never thought in a million years that God would use somebody like me. Hey, man, I never thought in a million years. I'll just give you my testimony. I got saved and I always wanted to be a preacher my whole life. But every preacher I know that got called to preach when I was about 18, 20, young man went to Bible college. I went off to college. God didn't call me to preach till I was 34 years old. Hey, man. And I, I, I'll be honest with you, I decided that I was just going to serve the Lord or I was going to church. I was going to teach Sunday school like I was doing. I was going to sing. I was going to serve Him to the best of my ability. And the Lord decided to call me to preach. And as I think about it, hey, man, He placed me over at Faith Baptist Church in White Pine. Hey man, in my opinion, it's among God's princes. Yeah, yeah. Among some of the best people in the world. Yeah. I look back at, at my life and I think, I sure don't deserve nothing that you've done for me. Right. I sure don't deserve to be put in the princes. Let me meet Brother Doug, Brother Sidney, Brother Rocky, other preachers. Hey, I wouldn't have got to have done that had God not come looking for me in the dung hill of my sin. Hey, you got something to praise Him for this morning. As Brother Rocky stood up there last night, he said, it's another Friday night. Hey man, that I'm clean, that I'm sober, that I'm saved. Hey man, that I'm in the house of God. Hey, you could be somewhere else on Saturday morning. Hey, no doubt this church house is full, hey man, of ex-drunkards, ex-drug addicts, ex-immoral people. Hey, but look where you're at today. Hey, you got something to praise Him for this morning. You got something to praise Him for. I'm finished. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.